And we're back again at chapter 28, verse 10 of the book of 1 Samuel. And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, there shall no punishment happen to you for this thing. Notes. Not only had Saul in the earlier part of his reign been earnest in his zeal for the Mosaic law, but even now it seems as if a witch was in danger of death, for he was to take an oath before she will acknowledge that she practices this illicit art. All of this portrays the fact that the law, no matter how zealously kept, cannot and will not ever change a person's heart. Verse 11 Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto you? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Verse 12 And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid. For what saw you? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God descending out of the earth. And she said unto her, What form is he? Or wait, let me read that again. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man comes up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. Notes. Now we must keep in mind that the scripture doesn't say that Saul actually saw Samuel, but that from her description he perceived that it was Samuel. More than likely it wasn't. Verse 15. And Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me, and answered me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams, Therefore I have called you, that you may make known unto me what I shall do. Verse 16, Then said Samuel, Wherefore then do you ask of me, seeing the Lord has departed from you, and has become your enemy? And the Lord has done to him, as he spoke by me, for the Lord has rent the kingdom out of your hand, and given it to your neighbor, even to David. Because you, dis because you obeyed not the voice of the Lord nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore has the Lord done this thing unto you this day. Verse 19. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow shall you and your sons be with me. Notes. Uh, they're going to get a permanent haircut from the shoulders up. Um, they're going to die. Okay, Not exactly in that fashion. I'm being silly. Scripture. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Notes. There is, so, there is much controversy by Bible scholars as to whether Samuel actually came up or whether it was actually a demon spirit impersonating Samuel. Either could have been possible. However, this truth should be made known. Saul received absolutely no help whatsoever from trying to communicate with a necromancer. Likewise, all other, all others seeking such will receive the same. Absolutely nothing. Verse twenty. Then Saul fell straightway all along on the earth and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel, and there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all the day nor all the night. And the woman came unto Saul and saw that he was sore troubled and said unto him. Behold, your handmaid has obeyed your voice, and I have put my life in my hand, and have hearkened unto your words which you have spoke unto me. Now therefore I pray you, hearken thou also unto the voice of your handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before you, and eat, that you may have strength when you go on your way. Verse 23 But he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants together with the woman compelled him, and he hearkened unto their voice, so he arose from the earth and sat upon the bed. And the woman had a fat calf in her house. And she hasted and killed it and took flour and kneaded it and did bake unleavened bread thereof. And she brought it before Saul and before his servants and they did eat. They then, then they rose up and went away that night. Notes. Saul's namesake, Saul of Tarsus, also fell to the earth. Acts chapter 9 verse 4. But how great was the contrast! The one rose and went away that night with a deeper night 
in his soul uh, to his doom. The other rose and went his way with a great light in his heart to receive the crown of righteousness that was laid up for him. Verse, uh, chapter 29 now. Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies to Aphek, and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. Notes. This chapter right here records the story of failure both on the part of David and of Saul. David will climb out ever depending on the Lord while Saul will not. The Holy Spirit will graphically record the happenings. Verse 2. And the lords of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands, but David and his men passed on in the re-reward re with Achish. Notes. As stated, David and his men were the bodyguards for Achish, who was the Philistine leader. Verse 3. Then said the princes of the Philistines, What do these Hebrews hear? Or what do these Hebrews... Oh, yeah, that's right. And Achish said unto the princes of the Philistines, Is not this David the servant of Saul the king of Israel, which has been with me these days or these years, and I have found no fault in him since he fell unto me this day? Notes. Now, the, you have to keep in mind the term Hebrews. This was a Philistine term of contempt. Much like the uh, Egyptians calling them Hebrews instead of anything else. Anyways, verse 4. And the princes of the Philistines were angry with him who was a quiche. And the princes of the Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return that he may go again to his place which you have appointed him. And let him not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he be an adversary to us. For wherewith should he reconcile himself unto his master? Should it not be with the heads of these men? Verse 5. Is not this David of whom they sang one to another in dances, saying, Saul slew his thousands, and David his ten thousands? Notes. Now, Bible scholars have long since argued what David's intentions were regarding the events of this chapter. We can only form conclusions according to that which the Holy Spirit actually gives us. Now, this was not a high point in David's life. Actually, it would be the lowest and most wretched to this moment. It would seem that he would profess himself ready and eager to fight against God's belief people and to help the devil destroy them. He told many lies to Achish, the king of the Philistines, but the lie of this chapter was the crowning lie. Well, as far as this book is concerned. He professed devotion to the Philistine monarch while no doubt rejoicing secretly and escaping from so dreadful a position. All of this shows how deeply a child of God can fall when he leans upon the hand of man and not upon the hand of God himself. Verse 6, Then Achish called David and said unto him, Surely as the Lord lives you have been upright, and your going out and your coming in with me in the host is good in my sight, for I have not found evil in you since the day of your coming unto me unto this day. Nevertheless, the Lord's favor you not. Notes. Uh, well, Achish is using the name of Jehovah, who is the Lord, and it does seem kind of strange. Now, the path of faith is wearying to nature, and there is an ever-present temptation to seek ease from the thorns through which that path sometimes actually leads. The persecution by professors of religion has oftentimes the effect of throwing the servant of God into the arms of enemies of God. Well, just as Saul's hatred drove David to the Philistines. But this only happens when the Christian follows his own will and thinks by doing so to avoid the very difficult, difficult times which, had he walked with God, would have became channels of teaching and refreshment to his soul. The more glorious a work there is for faith, the more sure is nature to weary if faith grows feeble. And we must pick up in chapter 29, verse 7 of the book of 1 Samuel. Thank you, and God bless.